2020 has been an unprecedented year for people and the planet. The COVID-19 pandemic has disrupted lives worldwide. At the same time, it has already seen many devastating natural disasters, such as the Australia bushfire, volcano eruption in the Philippines, locust swamps in East Africa, earthquakes in Mexico, California wide fell, as well as floods and cyclones in India. Disasters linked to climate and weather extremes have always been part of our Earth system, but they are becoming more frequent and intense as the world warms up. The world is set to see its warmest five years on record, and we are at least one degree Celsius above pre-industrial levels. According to natural scientists, Climate change is intensifying natural disasters like wild fires and floods, making them increasingly devastating. Sea levels are rising, the Arctic is melting, oceans are acidifying, coral reefs are dying, and the forests are burning. No corner of the globe is immune to the devastating consequences of climate change. Increasing and irreversible impact of climate change are fueling environmental degradation, natural disasters, weather extremes, food and water insecurity, economic disruption, conflict, and terrorism. At the infinite cost of climate change reaches irreversible highs, now is the time for bold collective action. If no action is taken, Entire district of New York, Osaka, Shanghai, Abu Dhabi, Rio de Janeiro, Mumbai, and many other cities could find themselves and water within our lives, displacing millions of people. For the past 150 years or so, humans have relied heavily on coal, oil, and other fossil fuels to power everything from light bulbs to cars to factories. Currently, fossil fuels still account for 85% of total global energy consumption and are embedded in nearly everything we do. As a result, billions of tons of carbon dioxide are released into the atmosphere every year from the burning of those fuels. Greenhouse gas concentrations are already at their highest levels in 3 million years and have continued to rise. Carbon dioxide emissions are the primary driver of global climate change. It is widely recognized that to avoid the worst impact of climate change, the world needs to urgently reduce carbon dioxide emissions. Never before has it been so clear that we need a long-term, inclusive, clean transitions to tackle the climate crisis and achieve sustainable development. We must turn the recovery from the pandemic into a real opportunity to build a better future. My favorite animal is polar bear. I think there is nothing cuter than a polar bear cub. However, a study predicted that the polar bear will be wiped out by the end of the century unless more is done to tackle climate change. As a researcher in chemistry, I'm always thinking about what I could do to slow down the global warming. Renewable energy sources such as solar and wind offer hope because they do not emit carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases that contribute to global warming. Solar energy is the technology used to harness the sun's energy and make it usable. Many are familiar with so-called photovoltaic cells or solar panels found on things like spacecraft, rooftops, and handheld calculators. The cells are made of semiconductor materials like those found in computer chips to produce electricity using sunlight. When sunlight hits the cells, it knocks the electrons loose from their atoms. As the electrons flow through the cell, they generate electricity. 
Solar energy is lauded as an inexhaustible fuel source that is pollution-free and often noise-free. The technology is also versatile. For example, solar cells generate energy for far out places like satellites in Earth orbit and the carbon steep in the mountains as easily as they can power downtown buildings and future cars. However, solar energy does not work at night without a storage device such as a battery and, a, and the cloudy weather can make the technology unreliable during the day. Besides, if we look at the global energy portfolio and what is needed, electricity only covers maybe 20 to 25 percent. So we were thinking if it's possible to com convert the energy harvested from the sun into the chemical fuels that are storable, transportable and usable upon demand. We found a hint in nature that is photosynthesis in the plant. This is a genius approach to using sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water to make glucose, which is a form of sugar that plants need to survive. During the photosynthesis in leaf, light energy transfers electrons from water to carbon dioxide to produce carbon hydrates. In this transfer, the carbon dioxide is re reduced and the water becomes oxidized. Ultimately, oxygen is produced along with carbon hydrates. Photosynthesis is important to living organisms because it functions as a counterbalance to respiration by taking the carbon dioxide produced by all breathing organisms and reintroducing oxygen into the atmosphere. The whole process of photosynthesis is a transfer of energy from the sun to a plant. In each sugar molecule created, there is a little bit of the energy from the sun which the plant can either use or store for later. So it is possible to mimic this process to store sunlight into the chemicals that we want. The answer is yes, and we call this artificial leaf. Apparently, there is no spontaneous reaction between carbon dioxide and water. We know that because we cannot get sugar if we just purge carbon dioxide in water and sunlight irradiation. Though the photosynthesis process is complex and the multi-step at fails, there are two components essential to photosynthesis. One is pigments responsible for effective trapping sunlight, for example, chlorophylls. And the other one is enzyme, which is a biological catalyst and speeds up chemical reactions. We have sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide. What do we need now to fabricate an artificial leaf? We need to find the suitable light absorbers and the catalyst to drive the reactions. We know that the semiconductor materials are good light absorbers, like the solar cells do. When the semiconductor absorbs light, photons transfer their energy to electrons which flow through the materials as an electrical current. But we don't need to turn the electrons generated in the semiconductor to produce electricity. Instead, we use catalysts to capture the excited electrons and use them for the reactions. The catalyst can be in organic nanoparticles, metal complexes, and enzymes. Similar to photosynthesis, the absorption of the sunlight excites electrons and converts sunlight into potential chemical energy. Taking inspiration from the way that plants create their own energy, we developed the walking artificial leaf, which is a slim sheet that produces oxygen and formic acid from water, carbon dioxide, and the sunlight. The leaf is based on cobalt catalyst coated on a sheet made of semiconductor powders. It does not require wires or electricity. When the leaf is submerged in a bath of water and carbon dioxide, and then exposed to sunlight, a chemical reaction takes place. With the artificial leaf, the solar energy is transferred when the 
electrons join the carbon dioxide and the protons in the water to make a colorless yet pungent liquid formic acid. Formic acid is a fuel can be stored and used on its own or turned into hydrogen fuel. The reaction rate and the product type are controlled by the catalyst used. We may use a different catalyst, for example, metallic ruthenium nanoparticles on the same semiconductors. Another attractive reaction without the involvement of carbon dioxide can be achieved, which is water splitting. Water splitting is the chemical reaction in which water is broken down into oxygen gas and hydrogen gas. This reaction is attractive because hydrogen fuel is a zero emission fuel burned with oxygen. Conversional hydrogen production using natural gas induces a significant environmental impact as with the use of any hydrocarbon, carbon dioxide is emitted. Therefore, efficient and economical photochemical water spreading would be a technological breakthrough that could underpin a hydrogen economy. When sunshine and the artificial leaf immersed in pure water, and then hydrogen and oxygen are readily obtained. In this reaction, the solar to hydrogen conversion efficiency exceeds 1% which is close to the photosynthesis reaction efficiency in the agricultural crops. The artificial leaves are made up of semiconductor powders, which can be prepared in large quantities easily and cost effectively. The leaves with significant areas can also be fabricated by a cost effective and readily accessible printing technique, for example, screen printing so that this wireless device could be scaled up and used on energy farms similar to solar cell farms, producing clean fuels using sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide. A potential sustainable plant for solar fuel generation and utilization can be imaged to work in this way. Water and carbon dioxide captured from the atmosphere or the emission of coal or natural gas burning plant are injected into a solar fuel production module such as that produce hydrogen and formic acid. The produced fuels are subsequently used in high efficiency power product production systems including internal combustion engines and fuel cells. Also, the obtained chemicals can be used to prepare high-value chemicals to generate methanol and the synthetic natural gas or precursors for plastic and fertilizers. The development of such a sustainable solar energy conversion system is beneficial to close the global carbon cycle and produce renewable chemicals and fuels from the greenhouse gas carbon dioxide. While technologies has contributed to climate change, new and emerging technologies such as artificial leaf can help us to reduce net emissions and create a cleaner world. With the substantial advances of the science and the technologies for artificial photosynthesis in terms of efficiency, scaling, and cost, solar fuel production devices are constantly being improved. I believe the scalable new technologies will enable us to leapfrog to a cleaner and more resilient world. I hope the government, businesses, academia, and most importantly us all will work together and play our part to create a cleaner future where suffering is diminished and harmony is restored between people and the planet so that we can save the polar bears and also ourselves, our family and our children.